Hey guys, welcome to my channel. Can I... What am I supposed to do about this? Alright, so I decided that I'm going to do this a little bit differently. So I already read the entirety of Volume 6. Why do I keep thinking this is Volume 7? I don't even own Volume 7. I don't even know what that looks like. But I went ahead and decided to just read... I still think this is crooked. I went ahead and decided to read the entirety of Volume 6. So instead of just giving an update on what I've read, I'm just going to try to quickly talk about everything that happens. Like just a brief summary of sorts. Because I do not want this video to be 27 minutes long like the last one. Alright, so let's begin. Okay, so Foss gets hit with an arrow and unfortunately they're not able to pull themselves together. They try to use their alloy to just connect themselves, but it doesn't work. So Ghost has to come in and save the day. But unfortunately Ghost is is taken from the crystal inside of them, leaving Foss and the other gym behind, sadly. So Foss is put back together and they meet the crystal inside. I'm just gonna call the crystal inside Ghost a ghost for now. They do get a name. But they meet Ghost and Ghost is upset and punches Foss repeatedly. But they're obviously mad because they blame Foss for being the reason that Ghost is taken away since, well, since Foss, you know, got hit by an arrow causing, like, forcing Ghost to pretty much step in. But they're still a partnership so they continue to work together and go on patrol. And Foss noticed is that Ghost actually looks a little bit like Antark, or actually a lot like Antark. And in fact, Ghost, like I said, they get a name. They're on the cover. This is them. And they do look a lot like Antark. And I was wondering who this was. And I was thinking maybe it's Antark because, I, I don't know, just the snowflakes. Like, I'm not sure. I don't know. I thought it was Antark, but it's not. So anyways, they see Antark and then Foss starts to act really weird. And what Foss ends up doing is imprisoning Ghost inside of their gold alloy to protect them and keep them safe. And everybody else is just like, uh, okay. Everyone's a little confused. So yeah, Foss is imprisoning Ghost to just prevent them from getting taken away, and they start to lose it, like, really badly to the point where their ga their gold alloy just starts, it starts acting on its own, or at least maybe under Foss's subconscious, but it starts breaking Foss apart. So Foss is literally destroying themselves at this point. And Jade has to step in and stop Foss from, you know, destroying themselves by splitting them in half again. So Ghost and Foss talk, and they sort of, I wouldn't say they come to an understanding per se, but it doesn't seem like there's as much animosity between the two. I think they're both just kind of trying to figure out their relationship. And Foss is kind of acting a lot more chipper and upbeat to sort of to show that they're okay since they personally feel like they've acknowledged the issue. And Foss decides that they're going to just stop seeking out answers about the relationship between the Lunarians and Sensei since it keeps seemingly putting others in danger and is possibly the reason that Ghost got taken away. Well, I guess you could sort of attribute it to that, but anyways, Foss decides they're not going to seek any more answers, at least for now. And here is where I'm wishing I looked this up beforehand. So, so Foss goes to Sensei and asks him to name Ghost, since this is a different gem than the other ghosts, and he names them Kyrngorm? I'm about to look up how to pronounce this. Okay, so I looked it up. I guess it's pronounced Karengorm? Alright, so anyways, Sensei names them Karengorm. So after this happens, Karengorm goes ahead and gives Foss more of a chance and kind of opens up to them a little bit. And now it seems like they're actually a team, rather than having this weird tension between the two. Winter comes along, and before Antark was obviously in charge of winter duties while everybody else would hibernate. But since Antark is gone, they've gone and decided to... They're all taking shifts for winter duty rather than just having Antark just do everything, I guess. So Foss and Karen Gorm team up with four other gems who I'm gonna have to look because I know I'm not gonna remember this. So they team up with Sphine... Oh gosh, I'm so sorry if I'm pronouncing... You know, I'm not even gonna try really hard to pronounce these. So they team up with Sphine, Melon, Peridot, and Hemi or I don't know how to pronounce the actual gem name, so they don't really want to look it up right now. But yeah, so they go with them. They kind of hang out with them for a little bit and a Lunarian shows up. And this is another really weird Lunarian, like weirder than even the last one that they faced. Well, not the last one, but the last weird one. I don't know. You could argue that a lot of them are weird. But anyways, they see a double black spot and out pops up. A Lunarian doesn't actually pop up right away. Instead, what pops up is a scene. But yeah, the scene shows a room with a stool, a table and like a game board or something with the window open and the black spot starts to dissipate except it doesn't fully disappear and out pops these little pieces it actually you can kind of see the pieces start to get up before the cloud even disappears or the spot disappears so they pop out and these tiny little pieces cause a huge amount of trouble for the gems it's actually kind of sad how much they struggle it feels like the, the lustrous are constantly struggling to fight against the lunarians but this is just this is really bad for them so the little pieces they pop up with these gems, like small pieces of other gems. Uh, Sphine notices their partner Topaz. The pieces are using that gem, and what they do is they, they make the gem explode, which 
It causes the pieces to fly out and break the other gems. So because they're so small, the gems aren't able to actually hit them. So they keep just getting slowly broken apart. And on top of that, the little pieces are actually jumping inside the broken parts of the gems. I, this is so confusing to say because I keep saying gems, but they jump inside the lustrous and kind of break them apart from the inside. And it's pretty much a losing battle. All of the gems are getting broken apart. At some point, an actual Lunarian pops up and just hits them with an arrow. Not to say that the little pieces aren't also Lunarians, but a different Lunarian pops up. So, Bort Watermelon Termal... Oh gosh, see, I don't know how to pronounce that. Okay, Bort Melon and Zircon show up, and they end up defeating the Lunarian. Although, they don't... They defeat the normal Lunarian, but before they are able to defeat the one with... <laughs> before they're able to defeat the super weird one that is just a bunch of game pieces fighting these people... Oh my gosh confusing. Foss is able to actually take the game board from that scene earlier, from the room earlier, and pulls it out. But yeah, they defeat the Lunarians, they get all of their pieces back, and some from the ones that they were using to fight the Lustrous. And Foss goes ahead and returns the game board, or they give the game board to Sensei, who looks at it and says something really odd about, basically he says that he made it, so I don't, I don't know, we'll get into that too. But yeah, happy ending, I guess. The gem survived, Foss has made some new friends, Karen Gorms made some new friends, and everything's going well. So they go back on normal patrol duty and they spot a Lunarian, which Foss is about to go take on, but because Foss hasn't had the best track record with taking down the Lunarians in the past, so Karen Gorm goes ahead and decides to just take it on themselves. But their arm has kind of been breaking apart because they actually did lose their left arm during the initial encounter with Foss, Ghost, and the other Lunarian. So they had to get a replacement, but it hasn't been assimilating very well with their body. So their arm breaks. And that's when Foss has to step in. But unfortunately, Foss ends up getting hit and loses their head. Literally loses their head. So Karen Gorm tries to get it back, but they just get bombarded with arrows. So Karen Gorm decides that as a replacement for Foss's head, they're going to take their most precious treasure, Lapis Lazuli's head, aka their old partner's head. And that's where the volume ends. <laughs> All right, it's a totally different day. Let's just continue. Okay, so let's talk about Foss first. So Foss is definitely going through it again. Foss goes through it like every single volume. I think the only volume that they really didn't have a whole lot to deal with was volume five. And even then at the very end, they get hit with an arrow, which, you know, destroys their body. Well, partially. It, we see what happens in this volume. It splits them in half and they're not able to control their gold alloy, which causes Ghost to step in and, you know, get captured. So obviously after all of that hop, happen happens after all of that happens Foss feels super guilty and Karen Gorm is understandably upset with Foss because I think it's fair to say that it's kind of Foss's fault that Ghost got captured sort of I mean it's not like Foss Foss obviously didn't mean to get hit but still they were being careless because they were trying to communicate with the Lunarian so instead of just outright attacking them they sort of tried to wait and see and that's kind of you know where everything went downhill so Foss starts having these weird hallucinations and then I mean to be fair Foss has been hallucinating is the thing so I don't even I don't see why it would stop now because Foss identifies the issue according to Foss the reason that they have these hallucinations is because Foss wants somebody else to come in and fix things for them I guess I I don't know I never got that impression but I suppose but anyways Foss identifies that issue and then they start they start acting different they kind of change their personality back to how they used to be well not change but they start acting more chipper more happy and more like goofy whereas for a while now they've been super angsty which makes sense considering all of the stuff that they've been through I mean it's kind of the same with the other gems too I imagine we haven't seen them the aftermath of them losing a partner but I doubt they were just all I doubt they were the same after that happened is what I'm trying to say but I know a part of the reason that Foss is doing this is because they don't want to pursue the whole uncovering Sensei's secrets thing because they feel like that's the reason that people keep getting hurt, essentially, like ghosts. Although, I don't think that's the best idea because Foss is kind of the only character that we've seen that's actively trying to find answers. And I mean, at the rate that they're going, they're just going to lose everybody because it's not like Foss. Okay, yes, Foss was there when Antark got taken. It's kind of Foss's fault that ghosts got taken. I guess it's... Foss's fault that Antark... I don't know. I feel like you can't really blame Foss for the Antark thing. Like, 
That was just a really unfortunate situation. The ghost thing was also an unfortunate situation, but in that case, Foss had more control somewhat in the sense that they really could have just been smarter about the way they approached that, I guess. But still, gems were getting captured before this even happened, so it's not like Foss is the only person that's lost somebody. And at the rate they're going, I mean, it's not like they're getting any closer to getting anybody back. According to Karen Gorm, actually, which I guess will bring me to that, uh, they say that they've never gotten enough pieces to actually bring back a gem before. And they've been fighting for how long now? So... I think Foss, it's probably not a good idea to give up on this whole Lunarian thing because they need something. Otherwise, they're just going to lose everybody. And I feel like Foss, I'm, Foss needs to team up with Cinnabar. We need a smart person on the team. But, you know, it is nice to see that Foss is making a lot of friends, though, at the end. Because Foss, you know, was feeling super isolated and alone until everybody starts kind of, until they have that whole team up thing where they fight against that Lunarian. And then it seems like they're making a lot of new friends. I mean, I think Foss already knows who everybody is, but they've never really been close with anybody, so it's kind of nice that they're getting a friend group. Although it makes me feel really bad for Cinnabar, who still has nobody, but anyways, moving on. So at the end of the chapter, Foss loses their head, this time literally. And now I really wonder what memories they're going to lose this time because they've been losing memories. I don't even remember what memories they lost when they lost their arms or legs. I know there was a whole thing where it seemed like they forgot about Cinnabar, but that wasn't actually the case. But now that they've lost their head, they've lost memories again. So it's like, what memories are they going to lose this time? I'm not really sure. I'm assuming they're going to lose something. Also, the fact that they're getting a new head is crazy to me. But does that mean they're going to look different now? I mean, I guess so, because they've been looking different. But like a new head, that's because I feel like the face is something that you think of. Like the face is, I don't know. It's just weird to imagine that Foss is going to have a different face now. I g assume. I don't know. I'm excited to see what happens next, to be honest. All right, so this has been bothering me. Okay, so Foss is definitely, I think it's fair to blame Foss a little bit for Ghost, well, not even a little bit, but it's kind of Go Foss's fault that Ghost got captured, sort of, whatever, I don't know. Let's talk about something else. So I call Karen Gorm to the stand. Karen Gorm blames Foss for Foss losing their head, but Karen Gorm is the one whose arm went flying off and Foss went to go get it. And Karen Gorm knew that their arm was kind of messed up. So why did they jump straight into battle with that Lunarian? That was stupid. I don't think there's a single gem that we've seen so far not try to save their partner or protect them from the Lunarians. Because it's kind of the whole their whole thing. Like, the Lunarians are trying to capture all of the gems. And if they lose another one, like, they're trying to get... Okay, they're already trying to get all the gems that they lost back. But it's not like this fight against the Lunarians is something they can really win. Because at the end of the day, the Lunarians just keep coming. And it's not like the gems are on the offensive. They're constantly on the defense. And if the Lunarians are constantly attacking while the Lustrous are constantly on the defense, then and the Lush just really just have to protect everybody. So I, what I'm trying to say is every single gem would have done the exact same thing Foss would have done, including Ghost. So Ghost says that, I don't know if Ghost really believes that it's Foss's fault that that happened. I don't know if they're just trying to not feel guilty. Either way, I don't blame Foss for what happened, is what I'm trying to say. I don't know if they ever explained why they don't team up with more than two gems, because it's always two gems on a patrol, but I guess maybe they're just low on numbers. And I don't know, I always, a part of me wonders that having a third person would help them out. Maybe they should bring Cinnabar on the team. I don't know. I just want Cinnabar to get more screen time. But anyways, Karen Gorm, I blame you a little bit. And also, let's not forget that Karen Gorm was sort of the one that put Ghost in danger to begin with, which to be fair, they also put themselves in danger because at the time they were one gem. Also, if Ghost gets put together, does that, would they like get put together onto Karen Gorm? I'm guessing. I don't know. Anyways, remember Karen Gorm was the one that sort of had Ghost jump onto that other Lunarian where they almost got captured. So I think Karen Gorm should take some responsibility here is what I'm trying to say. But th with that being said, I actually really like like Karen Gorm. I think they're, I don't know, I like their dynamic with Foss. There's a lot of like rude, rough around the edges characters. We have Bort, Karen Gorm, and Cinnabar. Although Cinnabar, I wouldn't say is like Karen Gorm in completely in that sense because I think Karen Gorm is more like naturally like that, whereas Cinnabar is just a little bit like a little angsty, I guess. Karen Gorm just seems kind of like rough, or, a little gruff. Okay, what else did I want to talk about? Let's just talk about the new characters really quick. I actually, well, they're new characters, but I guess technically they've been there the whole time. I actually really like them. I like that they're making friends with Foss. It's also so interesting to see more characters that have lost somebody. I feel like that's something that wasn't really talked about in the very beginning, but ever since we learned more about, which in the last volume, we learned more about Alexi, who else? Yellow, Pad Paradsha, and Rutai. Like, well, okay, I don't think any of, well, no, actually, that's a lie, because Yellow Diamond's always talked about how they've lost partners in the past, but it's just nice to see that we're learning more about other gems that have gone through the same thing. Also, for some reason, I put that in my notes as who hasn't lost a party member. I'm not really sure why I wrote that. Not, I don't know what I was thinking there, but yeah. Of my favorite of the new characters, I think I like Watermelon Tourmaline. Tourma 
I don't know how to say that word. Melon, I think they're the cutest, but I mean, we don't really know much about them either other than that they're cute, but I just like their design a lot. All right, so let's talk about Sensei. I'm not really a theorizing or a theory type of person. I'm just not good at coming up with stuff like that. But what the heck is going on with Sensei? Okay, so we learned that when Sphine and... I already forgot, Peridot, right. Okay, so Sphine and Peridot were talking about how they first met or how they first teamed up. And Sphine says that they were both... Well, okay, Peridot and Sphine were both feeling bad because they were feeling less and less sad, I guess, about their partners disappearing, or they were kind of thinking less about them. They weren't thinking about them as much, and they felt guilty because of that. So Sensei tells them that it's kind of rare for people to get closure on their emotions, and it's something you can't just bring out. You can't bring that about on your own, and you have to just, it has to come to you, I guess, or you have to, you can't force it to happen, is what he's trying to say, I guess. But I don't know, does that connect to the Lunarians in a way? Because if we remember, that first weird Lunarian that showed up was a dog of some kind, and Sensei he obviously knew who the dog was because he named him Shiro or he called him Shiro and I assume that's his actual name and not something he just made up on the spot. So in that case who was receiving closure? Was it Shiro or was it Sensei? Because the new Lunarian that shows up in this volume was some kind of game that Sensei created I guess. He says something about we never knew that the creations or what would happen to them once they reach their end or something. I don't even also I have no idea what that means like what? I have so many questions but once he actually touches the game board and you know starts talking to it it disappears so what the heck does that mean? I feel like it all ties into this idea of closure, even though I'm still not 100% sure. I guess in that case, it'd be Sensei who's getting closure, but I don't understand why these things are coming to life and attacking the, the Lustrous. I don't know. It's just weird. Also, I feel like the, the Lustrous are getting set up. I mean, not like intentionally set up, but remember, they couldn't even kill Shiro because every time they hit it, it just split into different parts. And in this case, they couldn't even hit those game pieces. If they go up against another Lunarian, how are they supposed to even win? The only reason they were able to, the only thing that took those Lunarians out was the fact that Phosphor Phosphorus Phosphophilite was able to pull out the game board. Actually, no, that isn't even what took it down. Bort took it down by wiping out that cloud. I guess they can beat it then, but it's not like the game pieces actually disappeared. I don't know. I just have more questions and I feel like I'm not getting any answers, but hopefully we get something soon. <laughs> And the last thing I wanted to talk about was, uh, I just had a few things to say. Okay, so let's just talk about this for a second. Remember the snail people from way earlier on in the series? Funny how we get all this information about lore, like at the very beginning of the series. And now that we have more questions than ever, they're just not here. I mean, to be fair, they were only with us. For, well, and by they, I mean the, I don't need, do they have a gender? I know their brother calls them sister, but I don't know if I should say she, I don't know. But also I forgot what their name was. Did I write it down? Ventricosis? I don't know. Ventricosis. So we have more questions than ever and it'd be really nice if Ventricosis was here to answer them, but unfortunately they're gone and I don't know if we're ever going to see them again. Part of me wonders, but I bring that up to say Ventricosis was able to negotiate with the Lunarians to get Foss captured, to get their brother back. And it was also part of their plan to use Foss to potentially get other members of their family back because I guess on the moon they're used as livestock or something. I don't even know what that means. I don't know. I Like I said, more questions than ever. And another thing about them is we don't even know, or Foss doesn't even remember them, so it's not like we're ever going to get answers to that unless they just show up again. Or Foss somehow regains their memories, but I don't even think that's possible. Also, actually, you know, Ghost says that Foss's head got taken away by the Lunarians. I'm kind of wondering what happened to Foss's other body parts. Do you think, I wonder if Foss's head actually got taken. We didn't see it get taken. We kind of just assume that they probably took it, but let's think about Foss's other body parts, including arms. So with the arms, okay, so Foss lost their arms whenever they were with Antark destroying the ice flows. They slipped in and the ice flows crushed their arms and just kind of, they drifted away. I guess they're somewhere in the ocean. And then with their legs, I guess they're also in the ocean. Foss lost their legs whenever the Lunarians took them. You know, they got hit by the Lunarians, but those Lunarians were destroyed by Ventricosis and her brother. So I say all that to say, I wonder if Foss's body parts can be returned somehow. Like, I'm wondering if that's going to happen or if I'm just being delusional. I don't know. Just an interesting thought. So I guess that's all I really have to say. I really liked this volume. I liked all these chapters. I'm so excited. I need to get the next volume so I can find out what happens next. But also my last video was a Land of the Lustrous video. So I'm like, do I want to record another Land of the Lustrous video? right after another land like i don't know also this is kind of a side note but i bought this today it's a kirby maxim tomato plush it's so cute it's also really big and i love it and it was only ten dollars but yeah i guess that's it for this video so thank you guys for watching um i guess that really is all i have to say i don't know i'm excited to see what happens next see ya oh, damn it